On March 15, 2025, Botswana made history when Botsat-1 lifted off into orbit, not just as a symbol of national pride, but as a signal to investors. Africa's space economy is open for business. Consider this, as of mid-2025, 18 African nations have launched 67 satellites, 11 of them by private companies. These aren't vanity projects, they're tools that drive real value. In Kenya, satellite data has boosted crop yields by up to 20%. Algeria's Alcomsat-1 connects thousands of schools and hospitals. Morocco's satellites track agriculture and borders with precision. And the continent-wide Digital Earth Africa platform alone is projected to generate $2 billion in annual economic value. At the center of this momentum is the African Space Agency, launched in 2023 to coordinate policy, streamline partnerships, and ensure Africa's data remains Africa's asset. But the stakes are high. With China, Europe, and the US vying for influence through space partnerships, the question for Africa's business and finance leaders is clear. Will this be the dawn of Africa's autonomous space economy or just another frontier shaped by outside powers? For decades, Africa's skies were a frontier reserved for others. When Europe, America and Asia raced to orbit satellites through the Cold War and beyond, most African nations remained on the ground, spectators in a high-stakes industry shaping communications, security and commerce. That changed in 1998. Egypt's Nilesat-101 became Africa's first satellite, a pioneering step that seemed modest compared to global powers, but marked the start of a new trajectory. For years, the continent's involvement in space was slow, fragmented, and largely symbolic. But in the background, seeds were being planted. A new generation of governments, engineers, and investors began to see satellites not as luxury symbols, but as infrastructure, critical tools for food security, financial inclusion, and national resilience. But then, in the 2020s, everything changed. The turning point came when African leaders reframed space not as science fiction, but as economic necessity. From internet connectivity and precision agriculture to disaster response and climate tracking, Satellites became directly tied to GDP growth, investment flows, and global competitiveness. This shift coincided with the creation of the African Space Agency, AFSE, in Cairo in 2023. Suddenly, Africa had an institution coordinating space policy, pooling resources, and negotiating with global partners on its own terms. For investors and governments alike, the signal was clear. Africa wasn't just experimenting with space, it was building an industry. By mid-2025, 18 African countries had launched 67 satellites, 11 of them by private companies. This was no longer about prestige. It was about productivity, profitability, and positioning Africa inside the global data economy. No growth story comes without complications. China quickly positioned itself as Africa's most aggressive partner, building satellite plants, launching dual-use systems, and signing deals with 23 African countries. For African governments, this was both an opportunity and a risk. The influx of Chinese capital accelerated capabilities, but it raised questions of data sovereignty and geopolitical leverage. Who truly owns the data orbiting above Africa? And can the continent's space ambitions remain autonomous if foreign partners hold the launch pads, factories, and financing? Today, Africa's space sector is reaching a critical peak. Egypt is constructing the continent's largest satellite manufacturing hub in Space City. Botswana just joined the spacefaring nations with Botsat-1, launched in March 2025. Private startups are emerging, betting on Earth observation as the next frontier of African fintech, agritech, and climate tech. Investors are beginning to recognize satellites not just as tools of state, but as platforms for commercial ecosystems. But here lies the tension. Africa's space ambitions are at their boldest 
but also their most fragile. The industry is expensive, partnerships are politically loaded, and the need for coordinated governance is immense. If AFSE succeeds in consolidating Africa's space governance, ensuring local control of data, and attracting blended finance into this new frontier, then satellites may unlock trillions in long-term value. If not, Africa risks becoming merely a client in someone else's orbit economy. As of 2025, Africa's presence in outer space is no longer symbolic. It's strategic, financial, and irreversible. For business leaders, the message is clear. Space is not a side project, but an enabler of industries from agriculture to banking. For policymakers, the challenge is to protect autonomy and maximize the returns. And for investors watching the next wave of African growth stories, the question is no longer whether Africa belongs in space. The real question is, who will capture the value of Africa's sky economy? Africans themselves, or the powers building rockets on their behalf? For more on Africa's economic and technological development stories, follow us at Spotlight in Africa.